Okay, in this video we're going to dummy code some categorical variables for use in a regression analysis. Categorical variables uh, typically need to be dummy coded before you can enter them um, into a regression equation. Uh, so we have two categorical variables that we're going to be using in a regression analysis. One is sex, which is binary, male and female. Um, uh, sorry, non-binary people, but uh, that's just how it's going to work for this particular uh, example. And the other is uh, religion, which I believe we have several uh, levels, which is Jewish, Muslim, atheist, and Christian. Uh, so uh, for the, the binary variable, it's actually pretty straightforward to create dummy codes. Uh, we're going to code, uh, initially uh, it's coded as 1, 2, which isn't ideal. Uh, we generally want to have, uh, if we're using dummy coding, we want to have one group be the reference group, and that's, that group will be coded 0, and the other group uh, coded as 1. So we simply just need to recode the sex variable. So just to take a look at what I'm talking about here, it is uh, pretty straightforward with a binary variable or a dichotomous variable. We'll just recode it into 1 and 0. So we'll make females the reference group and males will code as 1. So we can go to transform, uh, recode into different variable. I never ever erase the, uh, the initial raw data just in case I make a mistake. So I click recode into different variables and we're going to recode sex into, I'm just going to call it dummy sex, uh, and I'll just put in the label um, that uh, females, sex with females as the reference category. Okay. Now we'll put, uh, click on old and new values and we will have believe that, let me just double check so we don't get this mistaken, females are two and males are one. So we're going to create, uh, since the males are one, they're going to stay as one, but females were two, we're going to change them to zero, right, to, to follow the new coding scheme. I'll click continue, oh, I forgot to click add for the second uh, code for the code for females. I'll click continue, and then OK, and now we have this binary variable with females as the reference category and males as the, the comparison group. Uh, we could, uh, or we probably should, uh, add value labels to that so that way uh, we, if, if we come back to this data set we know which is uh, male and which is uh, female. Uh, but for now we'll just leave it be. So that's pretty straightforward and we can enter that now into the ref into the regression equation with females as the reference category. Uh, a little bit more complicated when we're dealing with a polytomous variable or a variable uh, with more than two levels. So, so uh, this religion variable has uh, four levels, I believe. So we have to create dummy codes. Uh, the dummy code, just like the one we just just made is going to be j minus 1, where j is the number of the initial categories, uh, minus 1 dummy codes to represent that categorical variable. So here we had two levels, so j for sex was 2, minus 1, so we created one dummy code. Now we have four levels of religion, so we're going to have to create uh, three different dummy codes. So how that's going to work out is we're going to have uh, I'm going to use Christian as the reference group. So we're going to compare each group to Christians. Uh, so uh, we'll have a code for 
Jewish respondents, they will be coded 1, and everyone else within that code will be 0. We'll have a code for Muslim respondents. They will be coded as 1, and everyone else will be 0. And then we'll have a code for atheist respondents. Uh, compare, and so each of these will, will compare Jewish, Muslim, and atheist respondents to the Christian reference group, respectively. Uh, so to do that, we'll also go to transform recode into different variables and the first group we'll create the dummy code for will be Jewish respondents. I'm going to click reset here. I want to put religion. Uh, so the first code is going to be, I'm just going to call it dummy Jewish and if we wanted to provide more information, if this is a real study, we'd probably want to be uh, providing more information. Uh, dummy code with Jewish compared to Christians, right? So that's ultimately what this code will do in the equation. So what we'll do is everyone who is one, which is Jewish in this data set, will remain as one. Uh, we'll click add, but everyone else, so click all other values, will be zero. So we click add, and then continue, and then OK. And now we have the dummy code for the Jewish participants. So now we have to do the same. Uh, th th once you get the hangout review, you have to do this a lot, it's better to use syntax, but I'm just showing you through the point and click menu because it's easier to learn this way. So now we want to create the dummy code for Muslims. So we're going to put religion back in and we'll call this dummy Muslim. And then we could put here uh, dummy code comparing Muslims to Christians change and then so now since Muslims are two initially we want them to be one in this dummy code we click add and then all other values will be zero click add and then continue and OK and now we have and you can quickly verify that you've done this correctly we have Muslims coded as one and all other groups in this dummy code coded as zero. So now we have one more to create and that will will be for atheists since we're going to use Christians as our reference group. We're going to uh, click on again transform recode into different variables. I'll just reset this. We'll put religion. We're going to call this dummy atheists click change and under old and new values we're going to have atheists who were number three will now become one according to the, the coding scheme and then everyone else will be zero click add continue ok and just verify that in fact okay the atheists are now coded as one so we have our j minus one dummy codes. We basically created the codes that we set out to create here uh, for Jewish, Muslim, and atheists. You might be thinking, well, why didn't we create one for Christian? Well, it just turns out that basically we have a coding scheme that fully represents everyone in uh, every one of these categories. So Jewish people are represented by 100, Muslims by 010, atheists by 001, and Christians by 000. Alright, so now if we wanted to use that in an analysis, we can. Uh, so what we would do is, let's say we wanted to see if religion predicted satisfaction with life, which is uh, labeled SWLS. Uh, we want to see if that predicts the satisfaction with life, let's say, above and beyond um, wealth and 
our dummy coded variable for sex. What we could do is we go to analyze regression uh, linear. Of course, if we were doing a, this for real, we'd want to do our diagnostics and testing of assumptions and all that fun stuff that, that we should do, but we're going to skip right now. We're going to put satisfaction with life as our outcome variable. We, as our step one variables, we're going to do this as a hierarchical or sequential regression. Uh, we're going to put um, sex and then also let's go with wealth as to see how they predict satisfaction with life. And then we want to see, okay, does religion predict above and beyond these variables? We're going to click next and we're going to enter in the three dummy codes for religion. Now we want to make sure that we ask for under statistics we ask for R squared change for the second uh, step. I don't know why it's just not uh, by default selected. Uh, I mean there's other stuff we would normally want to ask for uh, but for now let's just focus on, on examining the, the dummy codes. I click continue and then click OK and we will run our regression analysis which seemed less than a second. So now we have our output. So our first model was just the two predictors, sex and wealth is uh, statistically significant. We're predicting about 33% of the variance in satisfaction with life with, with those two predictors. Uh, and the model is uh, at least significantly better than, than zero. Uh, the second model, so we look at the change in R squared, it gives us about 13% more predictive power. So now we're, we're um, predicting uh, about 45% of satisfaction with life. And that change is indeed, if we look at the significance of the change, p-value is reasonably low at 0 0.025. So we're going to tentatively say that religion predicts uh, satisfaction with life above and beyond uh, the variable for sex and the variable for wealth. So looking at the coefficients in the first model, we see that um, wealth, interestingly, the coefficient is quite small, but that's because it's it's got a a large range of units. So even though the coefficient looks as if it's zero, uh, it might be better to actually interpret the, uh, the beta weights here uh, because that is a statistically significant um, uh, relationship. It's just that the unit is actually one dollar, so, so it looks like the, the unstandardized coefficient is quite small. But nonetheless, it looks like wealth is positively associated with satisfaction with life. Uh, looking at uh, the coefficient for uh, sex. Uh, we use females as the reference category. So comparing males to females, it seems that males have a uh, score about five, actually almost six points less on satisfaction with life than do females. So that's basically comparing, this coefficient is basically now comparing the, the group uh, labeled as one to the reference group, which is females. And so we're seeing that males have uh, lower satisfaction with life in this sample than do uh, females, and that p-value is also quite low. Now looking at the dummy codes individually for religion, we see that the only one with a significant comparison is um, atheists. So atheists appear to have, since atheists are coded one here, they appear to have significantly lower satisfaction with life than the reference category with is Christian, which is Christians. Uh, comparing Muslims to Christians, we did not get uh, very much of a difference and we would not say that that was statistically significant. And comparing uh, Jewish participants to Christians, again, it, it doesn't seem to make very much of a difference in terms of satisfaction with life. Uh, uh, one thing to note is that for the constant uh, since the um, since the reference category is coded zero zero zero, uh, the the, um, the the reference category that is represented in the constant 
Uh, so remember the constant is the predicted value of the dependent variable, which is satisfaction with life, when all, all of the predictors are set to zero. Uh, so that would be, the constant would be representative of when all predictors are set to zero. So that would be uh, kind of nonsensical for, for, for wealth. Uh, I guess maybe not completely nonsensical, but it would be for females, and it would also be for Christians, uh, would, would, would be the category that goes into uh, determining the constant. Okay, so basically what we've gone over is how to dummy code a variable, how to check if that dummy coded variable taken together predicts above and beyond some other variables, and then we've also looked at how to interpret the individual coefficients for the dummy coded variable. One thing that can arise is you may actually want a different comparison that's not available in your dummy coding scheme that you initially used. Uh, usually uh, using SPSS, the best way, so say you wanted to compare uh, Muslims to atheists, we don't have that comparison in this dummy coding scheme. You might want to create uh, a new set of codes where you use um, either Muslims or atheists as the uh, reference category. So you will want to think about which group do you want to use as your reference category, uh, assuming you want to have a reference category and that you want to use uh, dummy coding. All right, I thank you for watching that, and I hope that you enjoyed it uh, immensely.